And we're also seeing one-month highs for the Aussie dollar as well as KB dollar. Of course, the tailwind is essentially being high commodity prices. But uh, what do you expect here? It's high commodity prices. It's also just, I think, to some extent, a risk appetite a relief, a return to risk appetite in markets after the drawdown in equities that we saw in the month of September. Uh, we do like the commodity currencies, although we would have a bit of a preference for oil-linked assets like the Canadian dollar, the Russian ruble. Uh, it's really uh, crude oil prices, copper prices, that we think will have the most sustainable rally uh, over the coming months. Many commodity prices have risen uh, recently, uh, but crude oil uh, and copper, we think, will be the leaders into 2022. That leads us for a preference with things like the Canadian dollar rather than Aussie dollar, which we think can perform okay, but likely to lag behind certain other commodity producing currencies. And that's interesting because rates are also going up in, in Russia. And so how does that set in with your target for the Russian ruble? We think the ruble has plenty of room to continue to appreciate. The currency has plenty of carry, uh, exposure to oil prices, limited exposure to uncertainty in the Chinese economy, uh, a very healthy balance of payments, a picture. So the ruble uh, is a favorite trade of ours. We've had a standing recommendation for some time. Really, the only hesitation at this point is I think it's a fairly crowded uh, position. You know, we're not the only observers that recognize the ruble's uh, strong performance. So at this point, the trade might be getting a little bit crowded, but we think a good performer, uh, if emerging market economic growth can remain reasonably healthy, if Russia can get the latest wave of COVID uh, in the country under control, we think plenty of room to run uh, for the ruble. That would be really our top pick in EM at the moment. Zach, and I know this, this is more about the pound and what's happening in the UK economy, and I'll, I'll come down to that, but really how are you thinking about, uh, you know, the broader debate around stagflation versus inflation, which will come with growth and the impact it can have on the currency world? And of course, then we'll come down and talk about the sterling. Yeah, I think it's a very important question. Now, of course, we have inflation. I think that everyone can agree on that. We have rising commodity prices. We have pretty high goods price inflation reflecting disruptions to supply chains. We even have wage pressures, rent inflation in certain markets. So fairly broad inflationary pressures. I think the question is, is this a reflationary environment? And I would characterize that as something that would be benign for risky assets uh, and reflecting good economic growth outcomes. Or is it something more nefarious where um, high inflation could be damaging to economies? We think it's much more the former uh, scenario and that maybe markets have underappreciated the extent to which improving global growth uh, is causing some of these price pressures. You know, crude oil prices are up partly because travel and mobility are rising. International air travel uh, is picking up again. Uh, and that reflects the fact that the medical situation in the world has improved over the last couple of months, particularly in uh, countries in Southeast Asia, where we've seen a pretty big improvement in manufacturing activity over the last uh, six weeks or so. So improving global economy, improving demand is one of the reasons that we're getting these upside pressures in prices. We don't really see a stagnating or, or declining uh, global economic uh, picture. So reflation correlations, what does that mean? That means bond yields can go higher, inflation expectations can go higher, but in a way that's more benign for risky assets. Equity prices uh, can rally credit can remain well supported, and maybe the dollar can be uh, somewhat weak. The stagflationary correlations that we saw in the month September, September will probably prove an aberration uh, in our view.